everybody, and welcome back to another standard deck tech video. Today's deck tech that's in the spotlight, Grixis Pirate Tribe. The deck has greatly improved from Ixalan thanks to the new additions of some of the pirates and rifles of Ixalan. It's gotten faster, it's gotten stronger, and has gotten a lot more fun. So if you'd like to pick up any of the cards I'm about to show you in this deck, or just cards in general, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com and use my promo code GREAT at checkout, you can save 10% off of your Magic Singles and products over $10. You're supporting me and the channel while saving money at the same time. On top of that, as well as getting some of your pirate cards from their site. So, that's enough of the chitter chatter. Let's roll into the deck. The Grixis pirate list, I mean, Ixalan had flaring problems. It was an aggressive deck with not a ton of good aggressive units. Sure, it had Fathom Fleet Captain and Siren Storm Tamer, which, by the way, are on this list as well. They couldn't just hold up the aggro by themselves. However, with the additions of Daring Buccaneer, Warkite Marauder, and Stormfleet Sprinter, the deck is much more aggressive and far more consistent at being aggressive. Daring Buccaneer is always a one-mana 2-2, two -two, and when he's top-decked while well, you have no cards in hand, it's not that consequential that he's going to cost 3 mana. Warkite Marauder turns your opponent's best creature, whether early or late in the game, into a useless 0-1 ability-less chump blocker, which is a very strong effect on a 2-drop creature. And finally, Stormfleet Sprinter is just what the deck needs. A haste 3-drop that's unblockable and really helps put your opponent on their back heel. Not to mention this card gets broken when you have one of our Pirate Lords out. Speaking of Pirate Lords, we're playing Metallic Mimic and Admiral Beckett Brass. We should all know what these two cards do at this point, but essentially, they buff our Pirates. I hardly ever get Admiral Beckett Brass's stealing ability off, but that's okay, since we only really use her for her Lord ability. The last of the creatures we run in this deck are Ruin Raider and Hostage Taker. Both of these cards are phenomenal in non-pirate decks, and there is literally no reason to not play them in this deck. They give you both card and board advantage at the same time, and that's something we definitely do not want to pass up. That's it for the creatures, which we're playing 30 of. That seems like a lot, and don't get mistaken. It is, but I felt with this new set of pirates, we could have this go-wide strategy that I thought only vampires could have in standard, hence the high creature count. But now, let's get into the non-creature spells. Cut to Ribbons, March of the Dread, and Sword Point Diplomacy take up the last 8 slots in the deck. Cut to Ribbons was my go-to piece of removal in this deck because of its Aftermath card, which can help end us the game. Yeah, it's at sorcery speed, but dealing 4 damage to a creature for 2 mana is too good to pass up in a Grixis aggro deck. March of the Drowned was a much better card than I expected. Right now, at least for me, there's a ton of control running around, and March of the Drowned can help us rebuild our board state by returning killed creatures from our graveyard back to our hand. And finally, Sword Point Diplomacy. Now I know some of you don't like this card, and that's totally fine, but it worked here for me. We want card advantage, and we want to kill our opponent, and this helps do both of those things. But if you don't want to play the two copies of this, you can replace them with some Fatal Pushes or finish out the playset of March of the Drowned. That's it for our spells, and now the lands. The lands are really tricky in this deck, and honestly, we're going to have to see Dominaria's lands to improve the land base here. We're playing four Spire Bluff Canal, two Dragon Skull Summit, two Drowned Catacomb, four Unclaimed Territory, three Island, three Mountain, and four Swamps. But despite the variety of the lands we have here, it's still really clanky. We want untapped lands during the beginning of the game, and this was the best combo I had for that. Hopefully you can approve upon this land base when Dominaria releases. Sideboard is going to be similar to my Vampire deck tech sideboard. I'm not sure what the meta is going to be after the banning, so make sure to tweak the sideboard to fit the meta better. We're playing Crook of Condemnation against Graveyard Strategies, Fiery Cannonade against Aggro, 4 Kitesail Freebooter against Control, 3 Lickout's Dispersal really against anything, and 3 Vraska's Contempt against Planeswalkers and mid-range decks that run God, specifically the Scarab God. That's it for this video guys, but before you leave, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that nice little bell next to it so you can get a notification whenever I upload. Also, make sure to vote for the next deck check you want to see in the top right hand corner. My very first Commander deck tech will be releasing 
after the gameplays following this. I really usually release a gameplay every day. So uh, tomorrow you're going to see the first gameplay of this, and then the next day, you know, the second one, the next day, the third one. And probably on that third day of that gameplay, I will release the Commander Deck Tech. The Commander Deck Tech will not have gameplay, unfortunately, but uh, you don't really need gameplay proof. Okay, Commander's all about having fun. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll hopefully see you for those gameplays and the next Commander Deck Tech, and I guess the next Standard Deck Tech.